Hi everyone. This is uh, Anuradha Srinivas Raghavan, author of the book Machine Learning, which was published by Wiley in the year 2019, Jan 2019. Now regarding myself, uh, I am an academician in the University of Mumbai with around uh, two decades of uh, experience. And uh, I'm mainly into areas of uh, data mining, machine learning, data warehousing, mining, soft computing. And uh, recently I've extended to machine learning along with uh, deep learning. So this motivated me to write a book on machine learning because usually when it comes to uh, machine learning, most of the starters or you say undergraduate students who have uh, uh, not having a clear idea about uh, the concept of machine learning. They find it uh, quite difficult or comprehensive to go with the heavy math which is uh, present in the subject. So I wanted to bring it to the level of uh, NAVE users to be very user friendly and uh, to give them an idea about how Python can help in uh, machine learning. So if you see the topics which is covered in this book, it has some uh, basics of machine learning, then um, how the model is being evaluated and some basic uh, supervised learning algorithm and supervised learning algorithm, data pre-processing techniques with um, hands-on on Python code for all the basic uh, uh, data, my, uh, machine learning techniques. This is followed by the use of optimization techniques, which is also used as a part of a machine learning algorithms. Uh, so these are a set of video lectures, which I have uh, uh, just made for the students to understand uh, step by step about the working of uh, each and every algorithm. So hope the student community in general and those who are interested in understanding the concepts of certain very important algorithms get benefited by these video lectures. So thank you, happy learning. So let us start with the topic of radial basis function. Radial basis function are an example which comes under the category of artificial neural networks, which are used for solving problems of supervised learning like regression, classification, and time series. When you look at a classification problem, the purpose of using a classification problem is for prediction. That is, to assign a previously unseen pattern to its respective classes. The training portion of classification helps in building a model with previous examples of each class and the output is nothing but a discrete set of classes. Such classification problems can be made to look like a similar to a non-parametric regression. Well, the regression problems which are invariably solved in statistics are of two types, parametric and non-parametric. The parametric model tries to build the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. The parameters whose values are unknown and are capable of being estimated from the data set. You would have seen in the previous lecture on linear regression that the regression problem helps in fitting a straight line from a given set of data points. So the objective of any regression function is to find out the unknown variables A and B and to find the equation of the function of the form f of x equals a b. The non-parametric regression, on the other hand, has no or very little a priori knowledge about the form of the true function which is being estimated. Neural networks, including the radial basis function networks, are examples 
of such non-parametric models. Estimating the values of weights of the neural network or the parameters of any non-parametric model is never the primary goal in supervised learning. Whereas the primary goal is to estimate the underlying function or at least to estimate its output at a certain desired of input. So as you see, the radial functions are special case of functions and their response decreases or increases monotonically with the distance from the center point. The center, the distance and the precise shape of the radial function are the parameters of the model all fixed if it is linear. Radial basis functions could be employed in any sort of model linear or non-linear or any sort of network single layer or multi-layer. It has been associated with radial functions in a single layer network. Neural networks including radial basis function networks are non-parametric models and their weights have no particular meaning in relation to the problem to which they are applied. Estimating these weights of neural network is never the primary goal in supervised learning. Whereas, the primary goal is to estimate the underlying. Now, let us go into the architecture of the radial basis function. It has three layers, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. It has one single hidden layer which performs a non-linear mapping from the input place to the higher dimensional place. The weights from the hidden layer to the output layer are cluster centers which are formed from the input layer. A Gaussian function is used in computing the output in the output. The radial basis function has exactly one hidden layer and that hidden layer. The concept of radial basis function follows what is called as Cover's theorem, which was proposed by Cover in the year 1965. Cover's theorem states a complex pattern classification problem which is cast in a higher dimensional space non-linearly is more likely to be linearly separable than in the lower dimensional space. Literally speaking, given a problem, a problem which looks linearly non-separable in the lower dimensional space when it is increased to a higher dimensional space the separability can be established between the data now let us go deep into this concept of covers theorem now let x denote a set of n patterns x1 x2 to xn the patterns are nothing but the outputs. Each point is assigned to one of the two classes, x plus and x minus. The dichotomy is separable if there exists a surface that separates between these two classes of points. For each pattern belonging to x, we define a vector phi of x, which is given by phi1 of x, phi2 of x, till phi m of x, where phi of x maps points in a p-dimensional input space into the corresponding point into a new space of dimensionality m. Each phi of x is a hidden function or a hidden unit. 
a dichotomy x plus x minus which has got only two output classes a positive class and a negative class is said to be phi separable if there exists a m dimensional vector w such that w transpose into phi of x is greater than or equal to zero for x which belongs to a class x plus and w transpose into phi of x is less than zero for x belonging to another class which is x minus. The hyperplane is, is designed at w transpose phi of x equals zero is the separating surface between the two classes. So when you have to visualize, suppose say, now how is it different from a multi-layer perceptron network? In the case of multi-layer perceptron network, we try to find out the separating line between each of the group of points. But whereas in RBF, we try to cluster points. And NLP naturally separates the classes with hyperplanes in the input space. The yeah, RBF would be separate class distributions by localizing the radial basis functions. There are three types of separating hyperplanes. Hyperplane linearly separable, spherically separable hyperplane and quadratically separable hyperplane. So this is one example which we have seen on the previous slide about hyperplane which is linearly separable. This is hypersphere spherically separable by means of radius. This, that is the segregation between belonging to the class and not belonging to the class. This is quadratically separable, quadrix. Now, the concept of parable or quadrix is being used to separate between the belonging to the class and not belonging to the class. So, as we know, the main cause of concern is some happening which happens in the hidden layer along with the radial basis functions. Now, what happens in the hidden layer? The patterns in the hidden space form clusters. If the center of these clusters are known, then the distance from the cluster center can be measured. The most commonly used radial basis function is a Gaussian function. The other function, uh, functions are multi-quadrix and inverse multi-quadrix function. In an RBF function, R is the distance from the class. out the width, B S. The distance metric from the cluster center is usually the Euclidean distance. So when the U neuron receives an input, the distance is found out by square root of the distance from that cluster point to the new cluster center xi minus wij squared. So the centers are randomly selected initially. Then the spreads are designed. The spread sigma is given by the maximum distance between any two centers divided by the square root of the number of centers. Then the activation function of the hidden neuron is given by a Gaussian function which is given by exponential of minus m by d squared into x minus mu i the whole square of your sigma. The value of sigma is nothing but d max divided by square root of 2m. In the previous case, the value of d max was root 2 and the value of m was equal to 2. So, substituting this, we get root 2 divided by root 2 into 2. Root 2, 0.135. The same is repeated for points 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 where 0, 1 is the pattern, the distant exponential 
of it the the radial function of it between this point and each of the cluster centers which is mu1 and mu2 are computed and this arrives at this particular values now when this is being graphically represented with respect to the radial basis phi1 and phi2 we can see that the points 0 0 and 1 1 are mapped above a particular line and the point 0 1 and 1 0 are mapped below a particular line so the decisive boundary is the boundary which separates between the two classes above which belongs to a particular class in our case it's class 1 and below that it belongs to another class which is class 2 so let us see the similarities between rbf and mlp both are feed forward both are universal approximators and they are used in simulation areas however mlp and rbf are different in some respects it is based on the number of hidden layers where nlp can have any number of hidden layers rbf can have only one hidden layer mlp can be partial or fully connected whereas rbf has to be mandatorily completed com completely connected the processing nodes in different layers shares a common neural model in the case of mlp like if it is feed forward the all the and the activation function it will be same throughout all the layers but in this case the hidden nodes operate very differently and have a different purpose the argument of hidden function activation is the inner product of inputs and weights but in this case it's the distance between the inputs and weights trained with a single global supervised learning algorithm but here rbf for usually trained one later at a time clustering is used in the case of your radial basis functions or the hidden uh, uh, hidden layer the output layer it uses your weighted average function training is slower when compared to rbf in the case of mlp and after training mlp is much faster than rbf but after training rbf is very much slower now the parameters are center of rbf activation function the value of sigma and the weights of the input output uh, input to the output layer different learning algorithms can be used for learning the rbf parameters so this is your radial basis